Welcome back. Trick-or-treating may not be in the cards this year, but there are still so many ways to keep the Halloween spirit alive. So here with ideas for your Halloween weekend at home is YouTube's The Domestic Geek, Sarah Lynn Kashan. Welcome back. Nice to see you. Hi, ladies. Thank you so much for having me. I could not be more excited. Halloween is one of my favorite times of year. And this year, it's on a Saturday, and I have got great ideas for things you can do with the kids from morning till night. So Sarah Lynn, I'm so excited to hear this because my son is in a little learning pod right now with a few other kids. And so what we were planning on doing was having the kids get together to do some, you know, little, have some little treats and, and do some little crafts. So I'm super excited to hear all of the ideas that you have. And we're going to start with this one. Those are those creepy brain cupcakes. Tell me everything about them. Now they all start with some store-bought cupcake mix. I used just a cake mix, made the cupcakes, let them cool. And what I like to do is actually core the center of my cupcakes. You can do this either with a spoon or with a really inexpensive cupcake core that you can usually find at most, most craft stores. And basically I fill the center of each of my cupcakes with some cherry pie filling so that when you bite in, you get this oozy center that actually tastes really good. Next, I top these with some simple buttercream. If you've never made buttercream before, it's just a combination of some butter, some powdered sugar, a little splash of cream, and some red food coloring to get this great pink brainy color. I just piped my buttercream on in a brain pattern, which is just basically squiggles back and forth for both the right and the left half of the brain. And then I top them with some really yummy edible blood. I know that sounds like a bit of an oxymoron, but I swear to you, it's tastier than it looks. It's just basically some corn syrup mixed with a little bit of red food coloring. You said store-bought and I'm like, I'm in. Um, I'm also <laughs> looking at like, so adorable, I guess they're meringues, ghost meringues I'm looking at right there. Talk to me about that. Now, a lot of people are intimidated by making meringues, but I swear to you, it's actually a lot easier than you might think. You'll basically just need either a hand mixer or a stand mixer, because it's not something you'd want to do by hand. And what you're going to do is you're just beating up three ingredients, basically some egg whites with some sugar and a little cream of tartar, which helps give your meringue some body. Next, you're gonna transfer that mixture into a piping bag. You could also do this in a zipper bag if you wanted to and just cut off the tip. And to build these little ghost-shaped meringues, you're essentially going to start with a big mound on the bottom and then a second smaller mound and then a small mound on top. And basically you'll just pop these into the oven. You wanna cook them low and slow, 225 degrees Fahrenheit for between 40 and 50 minutes. Keep a close eye on them because you don't want them to brown. You'll Then you'll lose this sort of phantom appearance that they have. The final step is going at their faces with a little bit of black decorating gel. You can find this at most supermarkets and this is something the kids can definitely help with. Okay, Sarah Lynn, I see some eyeballs looking back at me. Let's talk about <laughs> those cookies. And are they edible? Yes, they are absolutely edible and they are totally delicious. These are candy eyeballs and they can be found at most supermarkets this time of year, of course, because they're perfect for Halloween. Now, this project is great for novice bakers. If you're not feeling quite ready to tackle meringue yet, these cookies are perfect. For this recipe, I started with a classic double chocolate chip cookie recipe, but you can even go so far as to use some strawberry bought cookie dough here, no problem at all. The real secret to making these amazing is just adding a little food coloring to get this amazing color. I opted for black here because I thought they looked really spooky, but you could just as easily go for some green, some purple, or even some orange, which would be perfect for Halloween. These treats look Amazing, <laughs> but I want to move to something a little bit, maybe, maybe a little bit more substantial for when the little ones get a, a little bit hungrier, right? Pizza skulls, what a great idea. I think that these pizza skulls are just the cutest thing ever. Now to make these, you need a mold like this. It's just a skull mold, sort of. It was actually made for things like brownies and cupcakes, but I thought it would be fun to turn them into pizza pockets instead. Um, now I found this online, but you can also buy these at your local supermarket. So they're fairly accessible. To make these awesome skulls, basically what you're doing is taking some store-bought pizza dough, again, store-bought, just making life all easier for everyone, and cutting it into strips. You lay one strip into each reservoir, fill it with the pizza toppings of your choice. So in this case, I use some mozzarella cheese, some marinara sauce, and some little pepperettes. Then you're just going to fold the two sides over and you create this little pocket. Get them into the oven at 400 degrees Fahrenheit for between 10 and 12 minutes. And honestly, they come out, they're so gorgeous. They're perfectly wow. browned. And when you pull them apart, they sort of ooze and goo. 
the way one would hope on Halloween. I love that. <laughs> Those are for the kids. So Those are very, very creepy yeah, looking. Exactly. Very creepy looking when you sort so of pull good. them apart. Okay, so you have something called spider cider uh, over there. <laughs> Is that a beverage for the kids or the adults? Or can we make the kid friendly one become adult? <laughs> really just depends on who you ask. No, this is definitely one of those drinks that can go both ways, which is why I love it so much. So the base for this drink is a combination of cranberry juice, which is nice and tart, some grape juice, which has nice sweetness, and then a little bit of soda water. So it's sort of sparkly, and I love that. Um, if you wanted to do this for a more adult affair, I highly recommend a splash of vodka or even some cherry liqueur here it would be really, really tasty. But of course, you can leave the booze out for the kids, no problem. You can garnish this up with some maraschino cherries if you want to make it really pretty. I like putting in a nice decorative spider because I think that really takes the whole look right over the top. That looks amazing. And I cannot help but not stare at those jars that are in front of you because it looks like there's some <laughs> creepy things in them. So this is my favorite way to do decor on Halloween. These are my spooky specimen jars. And there's so many fun ways to do this, but all they really take are some mason jars and some dollar store bones and skeletons. And all I've done is I've popped the skeletons in there and I filled each with some water and just a touch of food coloring. Mm. The cool part is you can really do these any color you want to. I kept them nice and vibrant for the kids, but I have to say my favorite look is when you actually use some tea because it's got this scuzzy sort of formaldehyde look if you want it to look <laughs> a little more authentic. Yes. Tea water is actually the way to go. And I have to say, these by candlelight look absolutely incredible. Another cute craft idea are those little spiders that you've got right in front of you. Tell us how we make them. Now, I made these with nothing but some pipe cleaners. I got some black pipe cleaners at the craft store. And you start with four. Basically, you just twist them in the center till they create sort of your eight legs. And then you just want to bend them about halfway down. That creates this amazing bend in the leg. And what I did was I just bent the foot up as well. So they actually have a really stable platform to be standing on. Mm -hmm. Once your pipe cleaners are in place, you can go ahead and doll these up any way you like. I got some decorative beads and sort of threaded the beads on. And I just think it makes them look like these really creepy tarantulas. The final step for me was just adding the pom-pom so you have a nice big belly and a head. You could go ahead and make these goopy looking with some googly eyes, but I kind of dig how abstract and fun they are. I even made a version that is a ring. So if you're looking for some party favors for Jaya's friends, oh my this gosh. is a really fun one. <laughs> so cute. And also you, you cater to those of us who like to keep things cheap with their decorating. You've made bats out of coffee <laughs> filters. How did you do that? Yes, these are so fun and inexpensive and they are the perfect project for a toddler to help with. They start with a coffee filter. Basically, you can just let your toddlers color away with some magic markers. They can do any designs they want. And then what you're going to do is take a little bit of water in a spray bottle, spritz them down, and when they dry, you've created this really cool tie-dye pattern. Now, the adults in the room are going to have to help with cutting these into bat wing shapes, but of course, that's really easy to do as well. And then the final step is just sort of clipping the center with a clothespin. I painted mine black to keep with that bat theme and adding the googly eyes so you get a really fun effect. Well, Sarah Lynn, when you do Halloween, you do Halloween. Thank you so much for these spectacular ideas. And if anyone wants to try any of the recipes, they're up right now on our website. Do not go anywhere. We've got plenty more show coming up. <laughs>